Right then, today we're doing a tier list. Now, I don't think I've ever done a tier list before on this channel, which is surprising because I always like stirring up a little bit of controversy in the comment section. So I thought what we can do today, and you guys can play along at home as well, I've got a link in the description because I've made my very own Boruto arc tier list. So we're going to be ranking each of the Boruto's anime and manga arcs into their very own tier list. To run you through the ranks we've got, we've got the best. These are quite self-explanatory, the best of the best arcs the Boruto series has to offer. Also, we're not comparing these arcs against other series, only against what the Boruto anime and manga has given us. Followed up then by Solid. These are the arcs that are they're still good. They're, they're good arcs. That's probably the best way you can explain them. They're good. They're not the best. They're not terrible. They're not bad. They're above average. They're good for the Boruto anime. Then we start going down to, yeah, they're, they're right, I guess. They're there for the more average arcs, ones which feel like... Well, they're not great, but, you know, they're not terrible. They're just quite self-explanatory. All right, I guess. Then we start getting a bit bad. Then we then we go down to I Can Live Without It. These are, these are the arcs, which is sort of like, well, I've watched it now, so the damage is done. But, you know, if I could do it again, you know, I'm not going to... If that was wiped from existence in my memory, I'm not going to be too bothered. And then for just the worst arcs, just get off my screen these are for those arcs which just you feel like you've been robbed of time watching and you just you can't stand them so we're going to do them in order as you can see i've got all the arcs down here so without further ado let's begin the controversy so first up we've got the new arc i remember this arc to be somewhat decent if i'm honest now i don't know if that's just because because it's been a long time since i've watched that because to be fair a lot of like early Boruto, I remember to be a lot better than it probably actually was. I don't know if that's just because time's gone by and you know there's a like, time heal, so maybe because it's not quite so fresh in my memory, I'm only remembering the good bits. But the new arc I remember to be somewhat okay, and I think like it's it's maybe a solid. It's maybe a solid, but then again, I'm looking at some of the other arcs down here and. <laughs> I don't know, I really want to put it in solid, but I think it's like high-end all right. I think we'll start off there. I can always move it if I need to, but like I said, I don't remember it being terrible, but like I said, it's been like, what, three years probably since I first watched that now? Next up is Naruto Gaiden. Now, this was the first like canon arc of the series. It was a novel, it was by Kishimoto, it did a lot for character progression for the Uchiha family. I've got to put it in solid. I it, It's definitely, I think when you direct people towards the Boruto anime, there'll be uh, like some arcs which, you know, you might just say to them, listen, if, you, if you're short on time, just skip it. But the Naruto Gaiden, I don't think I see many people saying to skip the arc. It's, it's definitely one of the better arcs of the Boruto anime for sure. Next up is the Mist arc. Now, this again, I think is a canon arc. It's a novel, I'm pretty sure. And it was also referenced in the manga. However, some of the characters are a bit, yeah, like Kagura, I think that was his name. He was a bit, a bit bland. Shizuma was somewhat fun. I feel like this arc would have been much better. And I remember when I first was watching it, there was a guy, I think, which Shizuma like sliced his neck See, like slit his throat that should have been end game for him if he had stayed dead i generally think this arc would have been a little bit better for me but i'll put it in all right i guess it was again with the new way i remember the positives on it on it but i know there were some negative aspects to it as well which i'm just forgetting right now i think this is the genin graduation or the genin exam arc the genin exam not graduation that is next the genin exam it's short but sweet i'm gonna pop it in solid i think we had some really fun fights. The nostalgia aspect of it to early tuning exams was great as well. Overall, I think it was only like three episodes, maybe four episodes long, but it was great. And it did a lot for Boruto's development. We saw Kakashi again and got a bit of insight on their relationship. I think we also had the hint towards Mitsuki going sage mode on Shino as well. Overall, solid, solid arc. 
Okay, now this one's the Genin graduation arc, and I think this has to be our first inductee to the I can live without it category because it's bad. It's like it gave us a cool Rasengan with kind of Humru and a cool little team combo with Team Seven. Aside from that, the actual story aspect of it, the main villains were genuinely terrible. Um, I, it has to be the first I can live without it. I mean. Aside from the Rasengan, mainly the Rasengan from Konohamaru, just for looking cool, there's, there's not much else I can really give this arc in terms of high-end praise. Byakuya Gang. Now, this is an arc that splits the community straight down the middle. There will be people that will put this arc in Get Off My Screen, but there'll also be people who will put this arc in Solid and, dare I say it, even the best. Some people love this arc, some people hate it. I am smack bang in the middle. I'll put it in all right, I guess. The, it focused on Shikadai a lot and did his character, which I like because I'm a massive Shikamaru fan and Shikadai is very similar to him. So I just feel like I'm getting extra Shikamaru content with Shikadai. Ryogi, I think was his name, was somewhat cool. It, it had like the curse mark things going on, I think, and some scientific ninja tech and it was it wasn't terrible definitely not terrible but it wasn't fantastic either i think it's like again a little bit like uh the new way in shizuma arc i remember more of the positives than the negatives but all right i guess i think when you've got arcs where you know there were negatives but maybe you can't quite pinpoint them but you can remember from when you were watching them i think they're sort of like the all right i guess ones they're definitely not if they don't stand out enough to be in solid but they don't stream out to you to be bad they're like the definition of all right by that point really aren't they the momoshiki or tuning exam arc whatever you call it automatic the best that arc the fight was <laughs> oh i remember hands up who's watched the episode 65's fight way over 10 times i mean that arc, that episode is probably my favorite fight in all of the naruto franchise easily when it comes to the manga arcs i'm basing them off the anime's portrayal of them so i'm taking into consideration all the extended scenes of them so obviously the tune exam and the magina bandits at the time of recording this video anyway are the only ones that have actually been animated but in terms of what it does for the plot going forward in the manga and everything it what it truly is where the story of baruto really kicks off so for that reason i have to put it in the best <laughs> <laughs> I forgot! I forgot! Oh no! What a tragedy this was! I remember I remember everyone being so hyped after seeing the Momoshiki fight. Like, Where's it gonna go? <laughs> and then you get the Chocho arc. Like, who thought of this? It was Kishimoto, wasn't it? Didn't Kishimoto do the Chocho arc? What are you thinking? No wonder Samurai 8 got cancelled if this is what you're... Oh, all jokes aside, Chocho arc. I'm not even a massive hater of Chocho. When Chocho's character is serious and the writers take her seriously and not use her for dumb childish gag jokes, I actually quite like her. I think in the tune exam her fight against Shinki was really, really good. She had some great moments in the Mitsuki arc as well. But when she's the sole focus, the writers just automatically turn her into a terrible joke of a character. And it's awful. And the butterfly mode as well is something really, really cool for the Akamichi clan. And again, it was just turned into a boring gag joke. And it's just, it, it has to be get off my screen. There's no other way to, I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually really praise the arc. I'd be surprised if anyone has this arc anywhere above I can live without it. If they've got it in anywhere above that, check their hard drive immediately. It has to go into get off my screen. Talking of the Mitsuki arc, the Mitsuki arc. Now, again, a bit like the Byakuya gang, it's split down the middle. You either love it or you hate it. I, for one, love the Mitsuki arc. If I, I, I'm tempted to put it in the best, but there's definitely some episodes in there which really drag it down like the snake cave arc and then all the episodes in there and then there was a bit in like the the planes with the no key and that kid who wants to become Tsuchikage. those arcs those episodes in the arc not only did they feel really out of place but they were incredibly childish and dare i say it boring so they definitely have to drag it down unfortunately into a solid but 
I think in terms of they I respect them for at least pushing the boundary they pushed the boundary to the utmost in terms of how far they can take an arc in the filler portion like without ruining the manga or anything like that it hinted towards Kara with the miss missing scientist at the end you had Mitsuki sage mode and some of the past with Mitsuki and Boruto and I think Sarada and all that they all learned about Mitsuki's heritage as well that was great I think it was the first time we've seen sage mode really at all since its actual canon debuts we had some incredible fights, it was quite long, we had an actual meaningful death with Anoki. And on top of all that, you had some good emotional moments as well with the likes of Sekie. So that arc, for me at least, definitely goes into a solid. And I stick by the controversial opinion that I think if this was drawn and not animated and it was in the manga, or, or a novel or something like that, this arc would be regarded much, much higher than it actually is. The Family Day arc. Now, this was another novel, and it was short, but I'm going to put it in solid because it's some of the most wholesome material you're ever going to watch in your entire life. The, the Uchiha and the Uzumaki episode are just... The, they are so rewatchable for being just so damn funny and adorable. You then got the Chocho episode, which, like I said, when Chocho gets an episode on herself, it's usually not the best, and, you know, that rule did apply to this arc as well. That's sort of what's dragging it down from being like the best. Um, but it's got to be solid. It's I, I, Again, I don't know many people that dislike this arc at all. The Jugo arc. An interesting one. A really, really interesting one. Now, I will give it props for trying to tie into the manga content. A lot of people, you know, with Sumire going into the scientists, a lot of people just because it automatically referenced or linked into the manga in the smallest way automatically i remember when it happened lost their mind and called this arc brilliant it wasn't it was all right i think you know like i said the positives we had that a little time to the woods of manga we had a great animated fight between jugo and konohamaru dio's voice actor was in it as well one of my favorite voice actors out of there Unfortunately, he did play the part of a character who I believe ate bird shit. So overall, it was a all right arc. It was like, it's definitely got its positives, but it was sort of, it's not a, a hugely important arc in my opinion. The Mirai arc. Uh huh. This arc is an example as to how nostalgia is not everything. Nostalgia alone does not make an arc good at all. Because that's what this arc was to me. It was just full on nostalgia bait. They were hoping that people would watch this and think, oh my god, this is Asuma versus Hidan. This is the revenge on Hidan with Asuma's daughter. And I, I think Crunchyroll even titled a clip that on YouTube, something along the lines of Asuma versus Hidan the rematch, something like that. It's it wasn't great, in my opinion. The the Hidan guy, I mean, he's a sorry excuse of a character. I don't want his name to be in any way, shape, or form related to Hidan's in the slightest. I thought he was terrible. I hated him. The, the arc itself, the, the, the plot of it was a bit boring, in my opinion. We had Naruto, not Naruto, we had Guy and Kakashi being good buddies in the arc, which are probably, I'd say, the only thing I liked from it. I have to put it in go off my screen. It's just... It was just boring, I think, in my opinion. And that's the biggest offence you can make in the entertainment industry. If you're making an ent entertaining, what's supposed to be entertainment anyway, in TV, and it's boring, you've lost already. Then we've got the Remen arc, which just follows suit after the Mariah arc. Oh, back to back, get off my screen arcs. That was not a good a good few months for the Baruto anime, was it? I, I don't know what the point of the Remen arc was. You had a romance plot in an anime that's not romance i don't know why it was the main focus of it really they introduced a new clan i think who would i'd be surprised if we ever see again maybe gets mentioned once in an anime only episode at some point but it just i, I it was just boring i didn't see the point in it and like i said that's the biggest offense i think he can really cause in this industry the one tail escort mission oh people are gonna hate me for this people are really gonna hate me for this I'm going to pop it in, I can live without it. It's it's just like we had the goal of Urushiki was mentioned in this on why he's collecting these tail, tail beasts. And if I'm not mistaken, that big master plan of his never even got revealed. 
We had his Rinnegan eyes and Byakugan eyes, which were never explained for whatever reason. I just don't understand something so unnatural as that in the Naruto franchise, just getting swept under the rug and hoping that any, no one would notice or something. I don't know what they were thinking there. And then while we're at it, we might as well just chuck the time slip arc into there as well. I mean, nostalgia again carried that arc in my opinion. Without the nostalgia, that would have been an, an instant get off my screen. Again, Urashiki arguably some of the biggest wasted potential in the Naruto franchise, maybe. I remember I made a video a couple of years ago on like my top fave Baruto characters and I think I had him on like number one or number two. Uh, because back then, after episode 66 in the Momoshiki arc, he was genuinely super interesting and mysterious and I think his character was just ruined. I... He was just turned into being evil for the sake of being evil. His goal never really got explained. The Rinnegan, like I said, never got explained. How he just went into it, like his transformation karma mode or whatever it is just by eating his own eyes. I don't understand that either. And then the final fight of that arc was, and this is people can hate me for this, was one of the biggest letdowns I think I've experienced in the anime. Because it was just a re a reskinned version of the Momoshiki fight. That's all it was almost identical to it. You had the big Naruto Boruto giant Rasengan and then Urashiki flying off into space and exploding and Sasuke being it's just it was a fancy it wasn't even fancy because it wasn't even as good as the Momoshiki fight. It was just like a it was a B Tech Momoshiki fight, I think, in my opinion. And unfortunately that arc because I don't even know if that was the original plan for Urashiki's character, because because those two arcs, despite them being sort of conjoined to a degree, they feel so far apart. I just, I wonder if that was the original plan for Urashiki's character, because I feel like he was just wasted, and it just felt like it came out of nowhere, in my opinion. Okay, next up, we've got the Magina Bandits. It's manga, so I feel like I, I want to put it in the best, because in terms of directing the plot forward, it's better than all the rest automatically however like i said i was going to take into consideration the anime version of it so the hozuki castle portion is going to drag it down to a solid it's still a high solid because those final four episodes are some of the best episodes in the barato anime especially the final episode of that arc but the hozuki castle portion it wasn't terrible um, but it wasn't fantastic either, let's be honest. So it definitely drags it down from being the best, unfortunately, to, to a high solid. And then we've got the manga arcs. Our arc, boom, the best. Kawaki arc, boom, easily the best arc the series has produced. Still ongoing at the time of recording this video. If you don't read the Boruto manga, I don't know how many times I have to tell you guys, go and read it. Do it, because you can see from this tier list I've made. It's no coincidence that only manga arcs inhabit the best section because they're easily a cut above the rest of everything else the Barato anime has ever produced. So if you've not read it, just go read it now. You've got the Shonen Jump app, you can read the, all the latest chapters as they come out each month for free, or you can pay like a couple quid a month or whatever it is, some tiny, stupidly tiny amount to get the entire series to read. It's it's a no-brainer at that point. You've got to go do it. Just You're severely missing out. And if you're waiting for them to get animated in the Boruto anime, you're going to be waiting a while, all right? But if you did enjoy this video, leave a like on it. I know I'm going to get dislikes on this video because it's it's a tier list. It, it, it includes opinion and no one likes opinion on the internet, do they? So let me know in the comment section down below your tier lists and also tweet me them as well. Uh, my Twitter is on screen now if you, uh, if you have done your own version of this. Like I said, the link down below in the description for this exact tier list. Any other tier list you want me to do in the future, I plan to maybe do like a, a Black Clover arcs one or maybe you want to do a Naruto arc one or it doesn't even have to be arc rated, to be characters, you name it. Put all of your suggestions for different tier list videos we can make in the comment section down below. I'll be seeing you guys in another video very, very soon, but until then, peace.